Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Where we will turn our attention later to, or return your attention to, the question of whether or not a Labour MP, or indeed anybody, I suppose, can oppose grammar schools on the grounds that they're bad news for a majority, while also sending their own children to private school, which is, of course, very good news for a tiny minority. Online bullies and trolls are to face criminal charges. Not all of them, I hope. I, I rob me of half my material if online bullies and trolls are all going to be criminalised. And speaking of trolls, but not online, IRL, as the kids say. Donald Trump um, just lurches from one astonishing episode to another and there can't really be any sense of surprise at all. I, I actually told you last week it would be sexism next. I think I even said that the only women who were drawn to him are women who are so persuaded by his racism and love his racism so much they're prepared to forgive his sexism. And, and I think it's time to stop pretending that this is about anything else. Like we, we, we possibly need a better word than racism because it is not necessarily a sort of innate belief in the supremacy of one race. It's more the completely mistaken belief that, 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 that your life is being damaged by people who've got even less than you, whether they're Mexicans or Puerto Ricans or Poles. This, this sort of belief, people who believe it aren't racist. They're just wrong. And that's what the whole debate is about. Uh, Trump is standing up and saying it is now acceptable to malign all of these people and hold them responsible for all of your problems. And it's a very seductive invitation. And if, you, if, you, if you're not prone to exercising the little grey cells unduly, you'd accept it. I'd accept it if I was unhappy. And someone said, it's all their fault. It's not, it's not the fault of the people you, you, you've been voting for. It's not the fault of the people you've been tugging your forelock at. I, I, I'd accept it. It's all their fault. It's all the Mexicans' fault. It's all the Polish people's fault. It's all the immigrants' fault. That's why life's rubbish. I'd, I'd buy that if I was unhappy. The more unhappy I was, the more, unlikely, the more likely I would be to buy it. But the point at which you start talking about grabbing women by their genitalia and um, have it described by allies and supporters as banter or as just the kind of thing that men do. I, I know that men can speak in ways when they're alone or, or, or in male company that they would not contemplate doing with women um, present, but there's a, a line over which I don't think any of us ever really stray, to boast about committing a sex offence, right? That, that's the point, right? It's not about employing slightly uh, uh, vulgar language when there are no ladies present. That's why it's called a drawing room, you know. I've gone off on one already. It's only six minutes after ten. That's why it's called a drawing room. Did you know that? Why it's called? We, we call it a sitting room, obviously. Uh, you, you, depending on your social class, will call it anything from a lounge to a, to a drawing room. But the drawing room is the withdrawing room. It's the room to which the ladies withdrew at the end of dinner so that men could continue the conversation without the civilizing influence of the fairer sex, as they would have said at the time. So it's not abnormal or in any way new to point out that men talk differently when there aren't any women present from how they do when there are women present. I don't think they quite had this in mind. I can't imagine that when Lord Tuffington Buffington at the back end of the 19th century invited the ladies to withdraw to the drawing room, he then started banging on to his fellow aristocrats about how many women he'd grabbed by the genitalia earlier that that day. And, and it, it's not a question of being prudish. I'm fairly confident, let's get a couple of controversial comments out there early. I'm fairly confident that proper alpha males never boast about committing sex crimes. Proper alpha males never boast about uh, their sex lives at all. But do you know why? Because we don't have to. Proper alpha males have nothing to prove to sort of grubby little creeps like Farage who thinks this is normal behaviour. Oh, he's boasting about his sexual... Like, like, proper alpha males don't need to boast about their sex lives. That... Uh, they really don't. Trust me. Because they've got nothing to prove. You're confident. You're comfortable in your own skin. You know who you are. Your friends know who you are. They're real friends. They know your warts and all. You do not need to tell them, yeah, man, I go around grabbing women by the genitals. That's how cool I am. And little creepy Farage sitting there go, oh, Donald, you're so naughty. You're so boastful. You're so brave. You're like a silverback gorilla, Donald. You are. You're like a silverback gorilla. And unfortunately, I didn't make that up. That's the phrase he's actually used. <laughs> like some sort of groupie now. Oh, man alive. And we're so far down the road of, of hypocrisy and dishonesty. No one's even pointing out what Farage said about foreign politicians interfering in the referendum. It's almost as if you know he's, he's a two-faced lying heel. No, 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 no points now for going, look, he's lying again. Everyone just goes, yeah, yeah, of course he's lying again, James. And the sun came up. Honestly. 
But it's what other men do that I'm interested in today. And also how, how these sort of stories reach the ears of women. I've told you in the past, I've got, I've got a friend who, who, who gets really on my wick sometimes, the way he talks about females. He's, he's 45 years old, and he still lives with his mum. So I, I don't know whether that is relevant to the conversation at all. But he is the only person I know who will employ the neuter when discussing women. He'll say, oh, yeah, and I, 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 I did this to it, or, or I went out with it. Well, not even I went out with it. I can't employ it entirely accurately the language that he employs. But, but if you call a woman it, I will ask you to stop. Okay, I don't think that makes me particularly uh, <laughs> enlightened or, 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 or prudish or, or anywhere in between the two. If you, if you say to me, oh, and I smashed it last night, like that awful bloke on Sky talked about it. Remember him? And the uh, Jeff's... Oh, I've, I've got to get the name right. Richard Keyes. Remember that, that, that awful scandal, the way men talk? And that was worse because women were present. And I just don't know men like that, you know? It, it, it's kind of like... Obviously, I've got a couple of friends who do talk in a way when I'm not there that they wouldn't talk when I am there. And do you know whose fault that is? So do you know who's responsible for that? Who's responsible for the fact that I don't like men talking in that manner when I'm present? My mum. It's really that simple. My mum brought me up to respect all people, but to respect women in particular. It's just 101, isn't it? It's the most basic, the most basic of instructions you receive is, is to treat women with respect. Partly because there's a sort of physical difference, I suppose, because men are generally stronger than women, so historically chivalry and all those sort of slightly old-fashioned things have been um, popular. But, but the rest of it is just the most basic of respect. Any man who thinks it's acceptable to talk about grabbing women by the genitals is pathetic. That's all. It's just absolutely pathetic. Any man who goes around talking about grabbing women by their genitalia, not the word he used, obviously, and I'm not going to repeat it ad infinitum this morning, is just pathetic. And once again, normal, sort of decent people look at the unfolding carnage on both sides of the Atlantic, politically speaking. They look at these situations unfolding and they just wonder, I mean, what is actually going on? How can a man stand up and boast about grabbing someone's daughter by her genitals and not hemorrhage every last vestige of support that he still retains? How, how can that happen? You're boasting about grabbing uninvited and unwanted the genitals of somebody's daughter, somebody's mother, perhaps, a human being. How would you feel if someone came and grabbed your genitals right now? Whatever your gender is. Just marched up to you, cool as you like, bold as brass, grabbed you by the genitalia. It's, it's unbelievable that people would even begin to construct a defense of this. It's how mad things have become. Do you know what it's all about? I finally realized this weekend. It's all about um, political correctness. I never knew what it was. Do you remember? We sat here. I've been doing this job a long time now. When I first started doing it, it was pretty much the first time I'd heard people say, oh, it's political correctness gone mad. I didn't know what it meant. I had no idea what it meant. I mean, maybe I'd led a sheltered life. I didn't have people who felt frustrated at the fact they weren't allowed to be racist or boast about violent sex crimes. I, I didn't know what political correctness was. So I got frustrated with everybody else when you read the stories about them banning bar bar black sheep. Never true. Or, or, or pulling down flags. Never true. Or you're not allowed to call it a blackboard anymore. It was never true. None of it was ever true. So, so you sit there thinking, what, what is political, what is it? What are these people complaining about? When your usual suspects go, oh, you can't say what you want in this country. What did they mean? And now you know. This is what it means. You should be able to call all Mexicans rapists while getting patted on the back for boasting about practically being a rapist yourself. That's what political correctness means. I don't want to abide by anything that remotely resembles moral standards. I want to demand that other people do while conducting my own personal business in a way that's borderline criminal. Certainly f qualifies as a sex pest. I want to be able to call all illegal immigrants, all Mexicans, murderers and rapists, but I also want to be able to boast about practically being a rapist myself without anybody calling me names. Oh, and, and I want to malign entire ethnicities without ever being called a racist. That's what it means, right? I can't believe it's taken so long to work this out. You sit there as a relatively well-educated, relatively liberal human being living in the West in the back end of the 20th century, hearing this phrase, political correctness, political correctness, political correctness. What does it mean? And now you know. It means that society somehow managed to create an environment in which people like Donald Trump didn't feel they could talk in the way that they were caught talking on that tape. It means that somehow, and I don't know how, I was too young to notice it happening, society in Britain and America, which are the two I guess we know best, 
society somehow created an environment in which people felt they couldn't be publicly vile. They just, they just couldn't be. They'd get told off for it. They'd get looked at askance. They'd get uh, pilloried by their children. You couldn't come out and say, let me tell you about the Jews, like that bloke I met at a wedding a few years ago. They, they couldn't, and that's, what they, that's all they meant. That's all they ever meant. Sit here, trying to overthink it, trying to analyze it, trying to come up with a sophisticated analysis of what the phrase means, political, what does it actually mean? All it means, and anyone who complains about it, is simply saying, I wish I was still allowed to talk about women as if they were slabs of meat and foreigners as if they were scum. I really wish we were still allowed to talk about women as if they were slabs of meat put here solely for our pleasure and all foreigners as if they were scumbags. And guess what? You are again now. Congratulations. What I find odd is that you don't seem any happier. You don't seem any warmer. You don't seem any more at peace with yourself or comfortable within your own skin. You are now allowed to stand up and say all foreigners are scum. You can do it again. No one's going to tell you off. Or at least not enough people are going to tell you off to make you stop doing it. You can talk about women as if they're chattels, as if they're belongings, as if they are perfectly, uh, as if it's perfectly acceptable to, to, to march up to them and grab them by the genitals. You can boast about your unwanted sexual advances on other women. You can talk about how your celebrity means you can do whatever the hell you want to them. And people will come out and defend you. Because political correctness is gone. Hooray, we've got rid of it. <laughs> and what are we left with? What are we left with? We're left with this. And, and you, you know that there are people in this country who are secretly delighted with what Donald Trump, maybe not even secretly anymore. Oh, it's great. And it's always women after, after ethnic minorities. Always, always, always. Why? I don't really know, but it's got something to do with a feeling that I should be in charge and I'm not. I should be able to have sex whenever I want and I can't. I should be able to boss other people around who are different from me, but I'm not allowed to anymore. Political correctness. That's all it ever was, wasn't it? That's all it ever was. Just basic decency. And some people despise decency. And they are the people who complain about political correctness. You can see it on Twitter. You can see it now. Go and find someone. His Twitter profile says, anti-PC. And I'll show you a sexist, racist, misogynist scumbag who, who really hates the fact that they've been made to feel ashamed of it in recent years. Whereas in the 1950s, it was normal. I, I was proud. I'd get applauded. One newspaper columnist this weekend even tried to write a sort of rehabilitation of Enoch Powell's reputation before the publisher decided to remove it from the online edition. And that's all it is. There's no mystery here. There's no uh, PhD thesis to be written. That's all it is. I want to live in a world where I can talk about women as disgustingly as I please and ethnic minorities as vilely as I choose. And I hate the way that other people have told me that there's something wrong with that. And that, that is Western politics. It's also not exactly the direction in which I was intending to lead the conversation this morning. What I want to do, and I use the phrase very, very cautiously, this phrase locker room. I've been in a lot of locker rooms, not perhaps as many as um, uh, hard, <laughs> hardcore athletes, but, but you don't hear conversation like this in locker rooms unless you're the one that's saying it. The idea that you routinely hear men boasting about being sex offenders is just not true, unless you're the one that does it, or unless, like Mr Farage, you're, you're really impressed by it. Oh, he's like a silverback gorilla boasting about being a sex offender. Oh, I want to be more like him. It's, it's absolutely shocking because guess what? Young people, daughters, sisters, waking up this morning thinking and hearing on the radio. Unbelievable. Do you know what this is? Donald Trump and all of his supporters, all of his defenders, all of this talk of alpha males and banter and boasting. That, and I hate to say this to you because I wish it wasn't true, straight out of the Jimmy Savile playbook. And when you're famous, you can do whatever you want to them. Donald Trump or Jimmy Savile. Seriously. When you're famous, you can do whatever you want to them. Donald Trump or Jimmy Savile. Sit here, don't we? That brilliant Louis Theroux film last week, puzzling over Savile. How, how did Savile get away with it for so long? I'll tell you why. Because some people were describing it as banter, or just boys being boys, or locker room stuff, or being like a silverback gorilla. Unbelievable. And we're watching it now unfold on a presidential debate. What have we learned from Savile? Sweet F.A. Phone lines are open, by the way. I should have mentioned that sooner. Tanya is in Staines. Tanya, what's going on? Well, first of all, a silverback gorilla is way more attractive than Donald Trump. So <laughs> let's just get that out there. And oh, okay. I want to separate my comments about um, 
a trump from from Savile because I, I do think it's two different things. It's but not. Obviously in some when you're ways, famous, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but you know, one of them said it. One of them proved it. As a woman, what really, really makes me angry, and I, I hate to say this about a fellow woman, excuse the oxymoron, but whilst there are still women, attractive, very attractive, beautiful women, lining up to have relations with this man, he can still get away with it. If, if women were not prepared to sleep with somebody as repulsive in every way as him, verbally, physically, everything about him, then he'd have to cop himself on and realise that actually you've got a choice. No, I, 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 I understand your reluctance to, to sort of uh, call people out, call out individuals, but, but it's the oldest profession in the world, w women essentially exchanging money for, for sexual favours and I think sometimes that describes marriages. It may well do, James, it may well do, but you know, there's a sort of honesty about prostitution that I have a grudging respect for, but to, to marry the guy and stand next to him and be, you know, prostitution is what it is. You're doing something, you're getting paid for it, she's dressing it up as something else and it just makes me angry and I really believe that if we just, if women just... But said, all, you know also, what? also, he wouldn't talk like that in front of his wife, would he? Now, that, that's, that's the other thing that you have to remember, this sort of curious dichotomy. So when she says, as she has, that, that uh, she deplores his wife, Melania, has said she deplores what he said and finds it disgusting, it's, it's almost as if, oh yeah, but you know, boy, what goes on tour stays on tour, boys will be boys. He wouldn't talk to me like this, but other women are, are I don't know, contemptible enough to be talked about. Well, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm so angry about I'm pacing around my lounge just because it, 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 I really do feel that I just cannot believe that he can get away with this and she still stands next to him. It's like the, it's like the, you know, people that are footballers or whoever have been accused of rape and the little mealy mouth girlfriend turns up at the, uh, at the courtroom holding their hand still. Come on! Shall Come on, indeed. No, well, I, I, I mean, clearly, you're, I'm preaching to the choir with you. What, what do you hear when you hear men saying, "Oh, it's just banter. It's just, it's just locker room talk. It's just this. It's just that. It's just the other." I hear a sexually inadequate exit hole speaking. That's what I hear. Very nicely put. And of course, anyone defending him would probably deserve a similar description. Let's get the phone lines up and running now. Apologise, like Tanya, pacing around the room, feeling furious. I, I want to know. What do I want to know? I, I want to know, actually, I, I, I could almost do this every day as a topic, but I want to know how anybody could see this differently from how Tanya and I see it. That's all. I, I, I want to know how a man talking about grabbing women by the genitals and boasting about how one's fame allows you to do anything you want. That is pure Jimmy Savile. I, I know it's a slightly arresting thought, but don't forget that, that Jimmy Savile was popular. Jimmy Savile was lunching with the Queen and holidaying with Margaret Thatcher. Jimmy Savile was about as high up in British society as it's possible to get without being an actual politician. So we've seen it happen here. This kind of level of predation and predatory behaviour that goes unchecked and unchallenged because Donald Trump is right. Fame does bring with it some weird sort of blindness to people's trials and tribulations. It's astonishing as well, isn't it, how uh, like this silverback gorilla comment from from, uh, from Farage. It'd be comical if it wasn't so weird. It's like a silverback gorilla with all his boasting and all his sexual predation. It's, it's just weird, right? A little bit homoerotic as well, I think. It's a very, very strange situation in which we find ourselves. But isn't it odd how the rights of women not to be groped? Do you remember during the refugee crisis how many on the UKIP side of British politics were really, really interested in women's rights? Really adamant that, that you know, the, the sexual assaults in Cologne were proof that millions and millions of foreigners deserve to die in the Mediterranean Sea. Suddenly, all these so-called right-wingers were passionately advocating women's rights. And that translates roughly now as lots of refugees who'd never done anything wrong posed a mortal threat to our women, but men who boast about grabbing them by the genitals, they're silverback gorillas. I, I, Madness, absolute madness. If there was a little dial, a little arrow, pointing at, 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 at sanity now during these conversations, it would be going in circles, it would have gone absolutely haywire. Think about that, the Cologne story, the same people queuing up to tell us that women are going to be assaulted, now queuing up to defend a man who boasts about assaulting women. There you go, there's the question, we got there in the end. Make sense of that for me. How can somebody really spout absolute nonsense about sexual assault in the context of immigration and then actively defend someone who boasts about committing sexual assault. It's almost as if, it's almost as if they don't care about women at all. They're just looking for weapons with which to attack 
the vulnerable people they spend their life attacking. Michael's in Waltham Abbey. Michael, what's going on? Uh, morning to you, James. You got me thinking this morning. I was listening to your uh, little summary this morning, and you said something, and it sort of triggered something in my head. That's what I brought you in it. You were saying that a um, few years ago, the so-called political correctness, sort of people kept their views quiet, and there was far more um, quietness, if you like. You know, because of political correctness, people did keep their views in their heads. No, no, I, they're, 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 the vile Sorry. views, not all views. I mean, people who, who think no, that, no, that yeah. human beings are essentially decent and everyone deserves to be treated with yeah. respect, they were never silenced. No, 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 no that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying that the bad ones, you know, the people that have yeah. these thoughts in their heads all along. Um, and then you said, but today, that's all gone. And that's what triggered me to call you. There is a kind of honesty in this because now you know who these people are. Whereas before, they would walk around holding these thoughts in their heads for, you know, political correct reasons, if you like. Now that barrier's gone, or supposedly gone, they're all coming out of the woodwork. And the good thing is, you can see who they are, whereas before you couldn't. You see my point? I do, and I, and, and I guess I preferred it when I didn't know how many of them there were. But it's better to know your enemy than sort of... Uh, it, it is if you're fighting, it is if you're playing chess. And, and, and you, you know, you want to know what moves your enemy's got up the sleeve. But, but these sort of debates, someone compared debating with Donald Trump to playing chess with a pigeon, is that it doesn't matter what moves you've got, he's going to kick over all the pieces, defecate all over the board, and then strut about as if he's won. And that, that was the yeah. point, because everybody knows it's wrong to be racist and sexist, even the people yeah. that are. And what you're doing now, what political correctness did was, was rob them of the, of, uh, rob them somehow of the right to do it with impunity. So no one ever said you can't be racist or sexist anymore. More, but you'd get a slap if you were. What political correctness did was provide the slap. Now, there's no slap. No, that's what I mean. Uh, and, you know, potentially before you could, you know, you could be with someone that you always thought was a fairly decent person. Yeah. And then, you know, recently their views because of public opinion and now things have changed you begin to see a change, and then you think... Oh, I think well, we're all seeing that. Yeah. We're all hearing people say things yeah. in front of us that they wouldn't have said a few years ago. Exactly. And then, you you know, for me, you're able to judge people because of that in a far more accurate way than you were before. Uh, and you find that... I mean, it's a silver lining of sorts. At least it's out in the open. I find it terrifying. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I like your optimism. Glass half full today, Michael. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> no, thank you. And it's the greatest compliment you can pay me at the beginning of a call when you say, you really got me thinking this morning. Uh, not everybody likes that, of course. Um, half past ten is the time. The comparison between Trump's language and Savile's actions. Remember, Trump's language was allegedly describing his own actions. Uh, okay. Um, is terrifying, James. And I'd never picked up on it until now. And Gabby, in the same minute, tweets to say, I'm kind of confused how James came to the conclusion of comparing Jimmy Savile and Donald Trump. It's really simple, and it's contained within one phrase. When you're famous, you can do what you want to them. How can you be confused? Who else do you know who believes that? 03456060973. I don't know about this one, James. People think this language is still acceptable because of the rise of the kiss and tell stories in the red tops and on social media. I don't know that that's true. It seems to me that describing sexually or violent sexual assault of a woman wouldn't make a kiss and tell story either. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number you need. If you, I guess what I'm saying is, help me understand this in a way that doesn't portray half of the American population as as rape apologists. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. And any man who says, "Oh, this is normal," is is lying to you. This is not normal. Any man who says it is just happens to do it themselves. They are apologists for violent sexual assault of your daughters. That, that's what they're doing. Any man who says it's just banter, it's just locker room, it's just boasting, it's just alpha male preening. He's like a silverback gorilla. Any man doing that is effectively saying it is absolutely acceptable for men like Donald Trump to grab the genitals of your children. Help me see it differently, because I'd really like to. Chris is in Whitford. Chris, what's going on? Uh, well, actually, I just wanted to uh, say what somebody else had said earlier, really. It's not, um, it's not. It's, I mean, mate, you're never going to get a job in PR, are you, with that sort of introduction? <laughs> well, no, not really. <laughs> but, see, th 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 at the end of the day, I think we're all, in this country, we're a little bit more uh, well-rounded. So when someone says something stupid, you don't need an announcer to stand by and say, he said something stupid. I think you do um, now. I, th I think that was true during the glory days of political correctness, but that ship has sailed. 
No, I, 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 I can't agree because, I mean, I remember um, some years ago when um, the idiot Nick Griffin went on to Question Time. Before he went there, before he actually uh, appeared on the show, he was egged outside by anti-fascism people. And, 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 and for me, the, the, the biggest idiot out of, out of that out of that whole debacle was, um, was actually the, the anti-fascist people because idiots hang themselves, and that's what they do. Um, and they, they usually... They're no, they're forgetting about the you're, you're forgetting about the class element of it. If Nick Griffin had been wearing a chalk striped suit and had a slightly more public school demeanour and came out with exactly the same policies, he'd probably be in the in the spin room at Donald Trump's convention now. But I I know I, I, I can't I can't agree because this is why we have people like you in the world because people like you are meant to call out people for their their idiocy. So then people who are maybe not so educated can look into it themselves and, and actually find the folly of the people that are actually saying the things that that they're saying. I mean, you, I well, this is the question really I'm know. asking today. This is very very yeah. specific. How could anybody? How could yeah. anybody defend a man who is boasting about sexually assaulting their daughters potentially? And that, that is the okay. point at which I expect... I'm going yeah. to confide in you now, Chris. I, I expect sometimes when we unwrap these topics and we find those, those little nuggets at their core, I expect the debate to end. I'm so naive. I think sometimes we come out with something and then everybody should just go, oh, yeah, I'm wrong. But the whole point about the political correctness parallel this morning is that some people know it's wrong and they still want to be it. So you can't win the argument with someone who actually does hate women and approve of violent sexual assault of them or someone who is actually racist. It doesn't matter how okay. clever or educated you are. I'm proud to be racist, they say. Down with political correctness. Yes, but then at the end, uh, at the end of everything, when everything's been said and done, you know, we, we have freedom of speech and we allow, you know, we have to protect that. That is sacrosanct. That is the thing that needs to be protected the most. Yes, and, and, and the, you're absolutely everyone right. Everyone no, you're, after everyone else. Yeah, and you know what? The, the other thing that happened... On. The other thing that happened beautifully, you've just reminded me of, this, this, this idea that it's sacrosanct freedom of speech, it's not, it's not freedom of speech that was under threat, it was the freedom of response. So that line about you can't talk about immigration without being called a racist was never true. But what it's transmogrified into is you can't be a racist without being called a racist. And now you can be a racist without being called a racist. That's where we are now. Yeah, I, I get that. But at the end of the day, Donald Trump's an idiot. We all know he's an idiot. We're all... No, we don't. We don't all country. know he's an idiot. Half the country is going to vote for him. Half of America. And there'll be plenty of people here who like the cut of his jib. They think he's a silverback gorilla. But then idiots... You know, there are idiots on that side as well. But this is the thing. For people like yourselves or people that maybe do see, see themselves... In no, I got, no mate, life, no, here it is. Here it is. To. It's here. Here you go. With a UKIP thing on the, on the, on the, uh, on the avatar. Paul Oakley UKIP. Thank you. Humbled and inspired by the beatific example of James O'Brien who has never said anything saucy about a woman ever. So there you've got Paul Oakley UKIP effectively saying that boasting about sexually assaulting a young woman is the same as saying that you fancy someone. Are you, you, how, how do you reason with him? No, you, you can't reason with him, and this is the good thing. He is now has expo exposed himself as being a complete prat. No, but he and hasn't. He, go, he, go, he goes away thinking that he's, he's delivered some great blow for freedom of speech by effectively saying that it would be fine for someone to grab his daughter by the genitals, and it would be akin to just simply saying something saucy. On what possible planet is boasting about sexually assaulting a young woman something saucy, like a, like a seaside postcard. Well, in this case, Planet UKIP. Sonia's in Ealing. Sonia, what would you like to say? Um, I think you really put something across really well a few weeks ago. You were talking about political correctness again, and I think you said, it's all just about good manners. Yes. And I think that's Always was. Honestly, what it comes down to. It's just about... But I think if you went around saying, oh, that's just good manners, I mean, people would be like... It's good well, manners gone mad, Sonia. It's good manners gone mad. But the only thing I would say to you is, is that I think it's about understanding the situation. I mean... I'm an optometrist. Now, I used to work in Chesham, which at the time had a BMP in the council. Hmm. And I remember I see old dears coming in to see me, and they were lovely. And they'd say, oh, haven't you got a lovely colour? Now, I could have taken great offence to that, but I'd say, oh, that's lovely, thank you all. And another dear said to me, oh, your English is very good. And I'd say, <laughs> well, it's my first language. But I think it's understanding the situation. And I do understand the Context. situation. People, people, yeah, exactly. People think that's ridiculous. And some people haven't had exposure to people of a certain... Uh, that's any different to them. But coming back to... Yeah, but that, that's uh, the difference between somebody who needs an arm around the shoulder and somebody who needs yeah, a, a kind of... A, it's about, but it's, exactly, it's about... A process. lesson. And I think it's very simple with, with PCs. It's just being, being decent. And it's not a legal thing. You need something else that's going to... 
stand in between the person, the law, and and what happens when you you cross that line. And it's about that in between. It's about how we conduct ourselves in society. And I suppose with Trump, this is not surprising. What he said is not shocking from him. No, no, that's very true. Because nothing he could do would shock you. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. Everything he says wants to push the barrier. But that's, that's kind of... It's almost like it's like a frustration, and I think the way people perceive him is that he represents a frustration. Now, whether it's a good or a bad one, that's not the issue with him. It just it's his it's his feeling of frustration, and I I think what we have to kind of get to the grassroots of with that issue is that why are people frustrated? Why are they disenfranchised? Why do they feel like he's the only option out? And I think those key questions and choosing a bully to fight your corner is a very interesting concept, I think, in a, as it is. And, you know, people so kind of, um, I yes. think people looking into how people behave in society and voting kind of habits. You know, what's most interesting, people that vote for, voted for Obama, and I went and campaigned last uh, at the last election, um, aren't going out to campaign this year. They're not, they're not going out, they're voting for Trump, which is crazy. I mean, how can someone jump fence so From Obama far? to Trump. Well, I think you've nailed yeah. it. Frustration and, and, and this key word change. It's just that yeah. one, one, one promise to deliver it sincerely and one promise to deliver it insincerely. No, 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 but also people don't re- receive it at the very bottom. And if you look at the most disenfranchised, they are right at the bottom. And those are the people that are constantly being cut out of the bigger picture of globalisation. This is a bigger picture. Uh, and that's where the Brexit parallels work very well, actually, and, and we're massively underestimated. Just the, the less you've got, the more likely you are to risk it all, just on a chance that things might get better. Uh, even though you're being warned, they're probably almost certainly going to get even worse. They're so bad, you're going to risk it. And that, that is obviously the constituency that he appeals to. But then you get the middle-class apologists for him, which, which is genuine. Um, misogyny and racism. Uh, the people who, who should know better, who don't have the excuse of frustration or ignorance or lack of education, but who just choose to disseminate hate because it's very profitable. And I imagine it... it can't, well, I don't know. What feeling do you get? What feeling do you get when you, you, you hear a man boasting about sexually assaulting young women and, and think, I'm going to stick up for him? What is the feeling you get from that? Is it just vanity because someone stuck a microphone in front of your mouth and if you said something normal like it's disgusting, they'd stop coming to you because that's a really long cue. It's a really long queue in the, in the MSM, the mainstream media, of people who will call out racism, people who will call out misogyny, people who will call a man who boasts about sexually assaulting a young woman, will call him the scumbag that he is. So that's a really long queue. You want to make a career in this business? You better stick up for him. Seriously, because that's quite a short queue. That's it, isn't it? There you go. It's another penny drop moment. Why would you do it? Why would you come out with this stuff? Well, it's, it's the only way I can get a check, James. Can't all be like you. The only way I'm going to get a show on LBC is by actually defending a man who boasts about being a borderline rapist. I'm never going to get a show if I'm one of the people providing intelligent coverage because I'm not very intelligent. So I'll do the defence. Short cue. I'm never going to get invited to America to be a political pundit if I come out with stuff that's true and sensible. I've got to come out with stuff that's deeply, deeply dishonest, dangerous and divisive. In fact, speaking of, of creepy Uncle Nigel... You've got that line, haven't you, about whether foreign politicians should be getting involved in, in our election. You remember that, when Barack Obama intervened on the referendum? <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like beyond satire. Oh, it's outrageous. Outrageous for foreign politicians to interfere in, interfere in our democratic process. I'm now in America uh, commentating on the American election and saying I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton in a million years. Oh, and I'm also the bloke who spent much of the year, the beginning of the year, banging on about how awful sexual assault of women is when it's done by refugees. But when it's done by a presidential candidate in America, oh, he's like a silverback gorilla. It's 10.45. I moved on her, actually. You know, she was down in Palm Beach. I moved on her, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I did try and f- her. She was married. I'm going to use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just, like, I don't even know it. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. So that was banter. That was blokish exchange. Right up until one point. Where do you think, where do you think, for you, where was the point? Where was the difference between stuff you could imagine your husband or your boyfriend saying? Maybe not your dad. I hope not your dad. I hope you've not seen that side of him, if it exists. But where's the difference between boasting about making moves on a woman? Which all in- insecure, inadequate men have done. All of them. And actually crossing into something altogether more sinister. When you're a star, you can do what you want. <laughs> 
and a couple of people have suggested that the parallels with Jimmy Savile are, are not immediately obvious. When you're a star, they let you. When you're a star, you can do what you want. And why doesn't anyone speak out? Because he surrounds himself with mealy-mouthed misogynists who are so starstruck and sycophantic that they won't call him out. Back to Jimmy Savile. How have we let them do this to, to us? How, how, actually, if you're in my box of trolls today, I, I'm going to put an arm around you for a moment. How, how, have, how have you allowed them to do this to you? How have you allowed your frustrations at, at, at your own life to be turned into a defense of a man who is boasting about grabbing the genitals of someone who could be your daughter? How would you explain that to your daughter? Yeah, he's all right. He's okay. If he grabs you by the... By the if he grabs... Yeah, just... You, how, do you, how have you let them do that to you? How have you, you, you got some sort of nasty prejudices about gays or foreigners or whatever it might be, and you felt frustrated for years about having them uh, bottled up about the way that you're not allowed to say it out loud, you can't say what you want anymore without being called a racist. And, and you think that gays are wrong, and you think that, 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 that people of colour are inferior. It doesn't keep you awake at night, but that's just the way you were brought up, that's what you've always felt, and the frustration you felt. For years at being told you weren't allowed to think the way you thought. You got looked at askance, they made jokes about you on the telly, and all these years you've been sitting there silently seething. And now, finally, someone, some people have come forward that allow you to do these things. Somehow it's okay to be racist again. Donald Trump talks about Mexicans, and you think, crikey, if he can do it, I can do it again. You get it, okay? You're, you're back. How did they manage to turn that into you today? taking to Twitter to defend a man who would think nothing of grabbing your daughter by the genitals. How have they done that to you? How have they taken your little uh, sparks of bigotry and prejudice, which we all have. Some of us try a little harder than others to damp them out, I guess, but we all have them. We all have irrational fears of things, irrational feelings about things we're not familiar with. We all do. And, and I guess if, if they're really powerful inside you and really strong, being made to feel ashamed of them must have been horrible, horrible. But how did they manage to turn that today into you thinking, I'm going on Twitter now, mister, here's one, anti-EU, not Europe. I'm going on Twitter now to defend a man who would think nothing of grabbing my daughter's vagina. Because that's what you've done. That's what you've allowed them to turn you into. Oh, he's like a silverback gorilla, this man who boasts about the impunity he enjoys due to his celebrity when he sexually assaults young women. It's not even, it's not even a debate, this, is it? It's, it's, it's a collective insanity that's descended upon the West, so frustrated by economic uh, inequality, so much effort put into encouraging us all to blame it on people who've got even less than us rather than the people who've got loads, like Donald Trump that it gets so warped and twisted. Where does it go next? After the ethnic minorities, the women. After the women, the disabled. Trump's already done that, of course. He's already mocked the disabled. But it's you I'm interested in. You who listen every single day to me and, and, and tick off the phrases that I employ on a bingo card because you're so committed and so devoted and so full of loathing. The, the, the effort, we're supposed to be talking about trolling in the next hour, but you, how have you allowed yourself to be turned into someone who today is sticking up for a man who would boast about grabbing your daughter's vagina. How have you let them do that to you? And now normal service will be resumed. I'll stop being warm and generous and kind and understanding towards my box of trolls. But seriously, guys, how have you, how have you let them do that to you? Your own daughter. And then back to Jimmy Savile, who we are all now united in our disgust at. And yet, quick glance at social media today, and you can completely understand how Jimmy Savile got away with it, because when you're a star, they let you. Layla's in Woolwich. Layla, what's going on? Oh, hello. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. And, um, all the uh, things that you've said, um, I totally agree with. I, I'm still shocked at how many people are defending the indefensible. I mean, how can you allow someone, no matter how much money they have in the bank, to get away with that kind of abuse? It's amazing, and I think it's a detriment to all of us as parents and as just human beings that we allow defenseless to be made into a mockery. They are, you know, human beings at the end of the day. And if he's done this and he's gotten away with it for years, and his victims are suffering in silence, how would they feel if that was their child or their mother or their auntie? 
I think it's disgusting and it's the environment that this man was raised in as well. We have to look at that um, America has become a laughing stock. It's not a democracy, nor is it a lawful country. It allows men, and I must say white men, to get away with rape. I mean, we've seen cases after case of uh, white men getting away in universities with raping young ladies. And this is the environment he was raised in, that the law does not recognise the rich and privileged as being criminals. They, but they recognise the poor and the working class as being criminals because obviously... Or refugees, re re refugees who might commit sexual assault are the scourge exactly. of the earth, but, but billionaires exactly. who boast about committing sexual assault are silverback gorillas. Exactly. And I find that abhorrent and I find it really disgusting. Why would you visit a country that differentiates rape? I mean, if you're rich, you're okay, you can get away with it because you're a star and obviously you've got billions in your bank. But if you're poor or a Fiji or a migrant or just someone going about their business and get blamed falsely for being a rapist, you're finished. Your life is over. You're in jail for 50 years until... Well, it's just double standards. Sounds like such an inadequate description, doesn't it? But that's exactly what you've just nailed. It's, it's the parent angle of it that I, uh, I find astonishing. How a father... How a father could listen to Donald Trump boasting about grabbing a young woman by the genitals and stick up for him or call it banter or alpha male boasting. A father. Especially, and, and I hate this because I know I'm guilty of it, of defining women by their relationships with men. But I'm not, I'm not defining women by their relationships with men. I'm just trying to make men imagine that it was their daughter it was happening to so that they can see why it's disgusting for it to happen to anybody's daughter. But no, he's a silverback gorilla. 10.56 is the time. And, and that's the point, isn't it? Just think, there's three things today. The refugees, okay, who were used as a, 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 by the same people defending Trump. The threat of sexual assault was the reason why we should let them all drown. But an actual boast about sexual assault, that's pat on the back time. Just, th just there, that all, just that hypocrisy. Forget the other two examples. That, right there. And if you've had to buy into that hypocrisy, if you now have to close your eyes to it and pretend that you haven't been taken for a complete mug, that's the only way in which, I guess, you can hold your nose and defend Donald Trump today. While knowing these men would boast about it if it was your daughter. Droit de senor. That's the phrase I've been looking for all morning. Droit, D-R-O-I-T. Forgive my French pronunciation. Droit. Droit de senor. Do you know what that was? I, I never actually double-checked my history books to find out whether it was true or whether it was just one of those things that was used to terrorise populations. Do I the senor was on the lord of the manor got to have sex with anybody from the village. When the lord of the manor got to exercise, if you like, aristocratic rights over the peasants. That's what we've just described, isn't it? Do I the senor... <laughs> He's a sexual predator who boasts about committing assaults. No, he's not. I shall tug my forelock and call him a silverback gorilla. Jack's in Sheffield. Jack, what the hell is going on? Um, hi, I um, I'd, your last call is quite shocked that people uh, still support him. Uh, I'm, I'm on the other side. I, I'm really not surprised at all. Uh, a few years ago in, in Sheffield, there was a, a local footballer who I know we're not allowed to name. No, we're not. That we're leaving uh, it right there. Because there's, a, there's, a, there's a trial underway at the moment, which someone should have told you before you came on. Eric's in New Malden. Eric, what would you like to say? Uh, well, can I fact check you real quick? Uh, if you must. You're short of time, though, so you won't have time left <laughs> to do can. anything else. No problem. 50% uh, uh, of Americans will not vote for him. I'd be very surprised if anything close to 20% of the actual registered voters vote for either of these candidates. Really? Really? Well, last election... Oh, uh, either. So a total of uh, 40, 45 to 50% maybe, uh, a turnout. Yeah, 55% yeah. in the 2012 election. And so you got to figure about... Third, so Obama gets 35%, 40%. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. No, okay. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty dull fact check, and I'm not going to find out what you think about Donald Trump's misogyny now, Eric. But, but yeah, of course. I, I guess I should have said half of the people polled or half of the people poised to vote. Um, I, I, and I'm grateful for, for the reminder. I don't know whether that makes for optimism or pessimism. People who look at the possibility of Donald Trump getting into the White House and don't vote... <laughs> it's, it's even more baffling, perhaps, than the people who are voting for him. People who, you can almost understand the, 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 the collective insanity of the herd that drives him ever closer to power. But the people who are just standing by the sidelines going, yeah, that's okay, okay, I can, I'm not going to get involved. I don't like that much either. I, I'm, I'm staying out of this one. Oh, boy.